So we're gonna go meet up with Shanna and she is a part-time rancher as well as a part-time fossil guide. I'm telling you guys, things are about to get amazing. We're going on a dinosaur dig. Here with Shanna and she's the owner of Baish's Dinosaur Digs here in Glendive, Montana. Who would have known that Glendive, Montana is just so full of fossils and dinosaur bones? Tell us what you guys do here. Well, we're a family-owned ranch um, and we have fossils scattered throughout our throughout most of our land, not all of it, but most of it. The Hell Creek Formation is exposed here. Mm -hmm. um, so we have the main dinosaurs we're going to find here are Edmontosaurus and Triceratops. They were the herbivores of the time. We get some other unique ones with the T-Rexes and Struthiomimuses and stuff mixed in there. This is kind of a general area of our Edmontosaurus. Um, he's a type of hadrosaur. These are jaws from the Edmontosaurus. This is the inside of his jaw and those are a bank of teeth. So all of this right here has been found on you guys' ranch? Most all of it, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. any of the, the stuff that I'll show you are, there's some other gifts from other places scattered around here too. One of the other cool things we find a lot of will be the turtles. And there's turtles, crocodiles, alligators, champtosaur. How many different types of dinosaur species would you say that you guys have found on your ranch? There's like seven or eight of them. There can be taurosaurus, triceratops, mm -hmm. edmontosaurus are the, the most common. The um, T-Rex probably being the next one. There's Struthiomimus, mm -hmm. Thesalosaur. Um, Look at her, she has it down. Who am I missing? <laughs> Pachy. <laughs> uh, yeah, our logo is our Pachycephalosaurus. What is happening behind you here? This I see is a, a large piece. skull. Uh, Shane found him three years ago. The year before last, we were able to excavate him. Um, there's actually another, oh, I don't know, another foot or more of his of his nose. Of the front there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can see it because it seems like the horns came up here. Right, yep. These are the two brow horns. This is the sandstone core wow. of it. This is actually bone. This is all frill. This is still rock that all needs to come off eventually. They're still kind of cool. There's a fig a petrified fig sticking in here and there's plant matter. Wait a second, did you just say this nose. is a petrified fig? Mm-hmm. Oh, yep. wow. All right, so there's food. You can find petrified food out here. That is amazing. This one is a cast um, of the Struthiomimus. It's named Margie. Um, my mm -hmm. mother-in-law Marge found it 25 years ago or more, and we finally just got the replica of it. It was in the death pose and it was curled up into a, a cast. It was, it was backwards curl, right. curl on it. Yep. Wow, this is incredible. So right here is the replica of what they found. The original went where? To a museum in Qatar, the country of Qatar. There you go. See, over here is a, this is another cast. This one is at the Museum of the Rockies. Um, the original one is, and it's a Edmontosaurus. When they got this one up and we're cleaning on it, there's actually a, a T-Rex tooth that's in, embedded in his nose right there. So do you feel like that a T-Rex had bit him? Yeah. Oh, yep. And I think, they, I think that they believe that it even, that it even healed over. Oh, really? It so, actually yeah. survived the attack. Mm -hmm. I have to ask yeah. you, how did you get into this business of finding fossils or becoming this fossil hunter here in Montana? Kind of by accident. Um, <laughs> my mother-in-law, Marge, she's the one that kind of started the, the fossil hunting. She's been doing it for about 30-some years. Mm -hmm. And she started taking out people just, just realizing that people would want to come spend the day oh, yeah. doing it. It has just kind of slowly turned into a you know six and seven day a week all summer long thing we're bringing people in from all over the United States and foreign countries now I know it's incredible um, started doing the guiding about five years ago and uh, I enjoyed it you know I knew I would enjoy it I didn't feel it realize that I'd become so addicted mm -hmm. <laughs> and love it as much as I do this is a replica of a t-rex jaw that was found here on the ranch. The original, I think, is in the Museum of the Rockies now. The rest of it's a lot of plant matter. This is Rex marrow 
up in here. You know, meat eaters will have hollow bones. Right. So sometimes they will still be hollow and sometimes they're filled in with mudstone. So as this, this one is. so that right there is part of a vertebrae? It's just a chunk, but you can see the marrow around the outside, right the but center. the center of it where it would have been hollow is filled in with mud. That is some big, on it. big bone right there. Here's another one where you can see the hollowness to it. Oh yeah. That's a, we know that's a meat eater bone by that hollowness. There's also a certain glassiness that they have. This is all plant matter. This is a palm tree. That's one of the coolest things is just the thinking about what the environment was when, mm -hmm. when the dinosaurs were mm -hmm. here. Look at that. Here's a palm. And then here is a petrified palm and you can actually see the grooves right here. This one right here is, is really, is even more so you can see it. Oh yeah, you can see it right here, the yeah. striations. Wow, you guys have found all Isn't sorts of stuff. Yeah, How far back do you feel one. that you guys are finding things? How many thousands or millions of years do you guys project? I don't know. Ah. <laughs> I wasn't there. <laughs> good answer. I, I like that answer. That's a good answer. It's, it gets more complicated the more you're out there and the more you see all the different things that were happening. Right. It's, it is really awestrucking. What type of dinosaur are we taking a look at? This is a triceratops. Um, this is the sacrum, uh, mm -hmm. which is the, the pelvis area. There's vertebrae that are fused together going down the center, and that's mm -hmm. what's why it's such a huge fossil. And we can see some vertebrae out wow. there. The One of the lower jaws is actually in that. Right here? Right there, yes. Oh, that's interesting. So basically, the bones can move around. Most of the sites that we find will not be articulated. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you're going to find because they've become disassociated. Earlier when we were talking, you were using the term gumbo. What does gumbo mean? Gumbo is what we call all of the, pretty much the gray soil in, mm -hmm. the, in this area. Um, it doesn't grow vegetation. It's highly erodible. Okay. So. Once it's exposed, what's the most important thing to do? to keep it or to, to get it glued and hardened and, and removed because, you know, as soon as it becomes exposed to the elements, it will, it'll get wet from the, from the rains and freeze up in the wintertime and it just blows them up. Oh, geez. You know, they need rescued. Yeah. Um, otherwise they will become <laughs> extinct. Extinct. Literally. <laughs> right. Rescue a fossil. Come out here and rescue a fossil for your viewing pleasure. I like that. He was just out there digging while we were filming and found a raptor tooth and it's pretty much intact except for that little piece right there. It'll glue. It will glue. <laughs> Anything's possible with Shane over here. He knows how to make it work. That thing is huge. I'll burn this whole pasture. Wait, are you, what? What are you gonna do to the spider? I will burn this whole pasture. <laughs> Our guide does not like spiders. Put grasshoppers or something into them. We had one at the house when the kids were what? little. And you know, so we we're like, oh look, watch, watch. This is how a spider eats and everything. Oh. And we started putting bugs in it or whatever. And at first it would run away. And then after the you know third or fourth one we put in there, it was waiting for it. And it just got to the point where it would come to the web, you know, come you out it whenever they, it saw so, us. This is the spider that Charlotte's Web was Something. like mimicked that off of. Oh, is that really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, what creates it is that the rock is holding the dirt and the erosion, you know, the water will run off of the rock 
in it, that weight on it holds it in place. Got it. So then every once in a while, the you know, when they get down far enough, then the rock will eventually fall off. Oh my gosh, this is cool. So as we're walking out to a dig site, she was explaining to us that these little guys right here, you can see them all along the way. They're called hoodoos. Unique name, but if you look at the rock, you can see the sand that's in them that makes them sparkle. But how unique, the rock is literally sitting on top of the sand. Usually, it's the other way around. It's just something that you might see in the Badlands in Montana if you come on out here. You see them all around. It's like a whole field of hoodoos. This is cool. So this is this is silt. This is like sand that you'd see. This is sand that you'd see at the ocean. Look at this. This is in the middle of Glendive, Montana, and yet this is sand. Just like what you'd see at the beach in Boston or in Miami. That's cool. It really does prove that this was at the bottom of an ocean at one time. Shane is our guide today, and he's going to be showing us how to dig for dinosaur bones. So Shane, what is needed? You need a basic digging implement. Okay. For you, screwdriver. Screwdriver. And a brush. And a brush, and what are you using? I'll be using a knife. <laughs> okay, this is gonna get good. And a big knife when oh. the bones are bigger. All right, do you have another knife? I do. What? Oh my, oh my gosh. Okay, you got your paintbrush. Okay, so he has his two knives and a paintbrush. I have my screwdriver and a paintbrush. I'm gonna climb up this way. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna slide on my butt down. <laughs> That's what we call using your head. <laughs> All right, I'm following you. Here is your first specimen. Oh, what do we have? That is probably a piece of turtle plastron, the belly shell. Right here? Yep. How could you tell? The color and texture present. Um, usually it's this nice peach color right here. Oh. So that's also fossil. Piece of fossil? Yep. And there's the, the lick test. If you touch that to the tip of your tongue and go to pull it away, it's incredibly tacky. Like it feels like you're pulling duct tape off your tongue sometimes. Are you telling me the truth? Yes. If this is a real fossil right here, if you, what was it, lick it? Lick it, stick it to your tongue. It will stick to your tongue? It will. And this is not a joke? This is not a joke. You can Google it. I can Google it. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm so scared. Here's another one. It won't bite at me, will it? I'll join you. Okay, fine. Let's do it together. Ready? Okay, cheers. Oh, it does stick to your it tongue. Does stick it's to like your tape. Tongue. Okay, we found a little fossil right here. There were at least four different species of Cretaceous turtle that were in this river system. I can't remember their names. But rest assured, they're multisyllabic. What does that mean? Many syllables. <laughs> okay. All right. Multi so, <laughs> many syllables. Oh, this just gets better, guys. It looks like, could this be bone? No. That's sandstone. It's like buried treasure is what it is. Is that part bone? That one is sandstone conglomerate. Nothing, basically. Once you've got a little wiggle to it, you can scoop in underneath in. it a little bit. Ooh, looky, looky, folks. Oh my, <gasps> look at that! It's much larger than you expected. Yes! Oh my gosh, look at this, guys. That's the marrow. So that what we're seeing right here is bone marrow. This is a cool find right here. It is. It's a really good find. So you're saying that this I would say it's a piece of a spine, but you're saying it's a piece of a rib, you think? It's probably a piece of a very large triceratops rib, but given the, given the outer shape of it being somewhat triangular, it could even be part of, say, a fibula. A fibula. All right, so the goal is to be looking for something that is like a light peach substance. 
a light peach substance. I see yellow. I see lots of yellow. Yellow is sulfur. Yellow is sulfur. This is just dirt. Right here. This is a piece of fossil. This, see this almost to me looks like dirt. It's turtle shell. This right here? Oh, you're yep. right. It is. This one has retained texture as well. From? That's also a turtle. Turtle shell. right here. I'm not sure if you can see that, but that is a piece of a turtle shell. All right, we're gonna go find some teeth. We are. We will All right, go guys, down. we're off to go find some dinosaur teeth. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We're trying to get to this dinosaur tooth. And this is the terrain we have to deal with. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, just so <laughs> God, please don't want to be. Alright. So so this one is a triceratops shed. Um, it's been broken and tumbled, but this is the wear surface right here, uh -huh. where it's gone perfectly flat. It's solid, non-porous. That is definitely enamel. Yeah, it is. And then this here is a rooted triceratops tooth. You can see the, the root here it goes down to the enamel here. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, oh, my excavating tool over here. So I need to gently go above it. Indeed. And if you pry against them, you're likely to leave some of it in the hill, but you've done well this time. Oh, it did well. Okay. All right. So really then, so then, very gingerly. You're the first person ever to have touched this. This is a rooted triceratops tooth. So you have here is the surface of the tooth. Mm -hmm. and this is the chewing surface. This one was not shed after use. This one probably came from a dead triceratops. Hey, okay, look at that tooth, guys. Kind of cool. Have you guys seen this view? It's beautiful out here. So it's an Edmontosaurus that right. we're coming the, up on? Yes, it's the duckbill. Oh, um, okay, yeah. Oh my gosh, you can totally see it. Oh yes, you can see the rib cage. It's a mudstone cast of his, of his spinal cord. Okay, These going all the way here. down. So yeah. this basically is the spinal cord right here. You can see the ribs jetting out. You're thinking that this is a piece of the arm right yeah. here? Yeah, this one here is the humerus. Um, there's also another bone sticking out here that would, you know, was another limb bone probably. He's not near as exciting as the Triceratops with three horns, <laughs> but we don't know that. You know, he could have been striped, you know, or, I mean, he could have been all kinds of crazy things that we don't know that we can't tell by a skeleton. Think of this, folks. You could be stumbling upon a full-size dinosaur piece just like this. This is incredible. I have to say there's nothing quite like dinosaur hunting. Check this out. This is a piece of a rib, piece of a tendon, and earlier we found a tooth that's worth over $125. It's amazing what these little tools can help you find. Folks, I would encourage you guys to visit Glendive, Montana, or if you live in Glendive and you have not done a dinosaur hunt yet, you need to do it. Well, until next time, I'm Julie Mack, and I'm off to our next adventure.
bush once. Had it I crawling really up my leg. Like what? Did it bite you? No, but I shouted in terror, no. brushed it off, and threw this fossil across a draw. Oh and no. Never to be found again. <sighs> Darn they spider. I, they thought I'd fallen and broken my leg. <laughs>